What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brian and you're watching Flick Garage where we do a lot of easy to follow videos on how to fix, mod or upgrade your mini truck as well as showcase plenty of other cars if we can get our hands on them. But today we're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on my 88 Mazda. I think the last time you saw it was probably when we added the big wheels we see here. They've been staying on there for now but I actually haven't moved the truck too much because it's having some issues idling. So hopefully today we're going to just take a look do regular maintenance, I need to change the oil, uh, just check the fuel filter, maybe go and get a new one, change any fuel lines or anything like that that might look messed up, and then just kind of go over it a little bit. Also talk about some of the little changes that we've already done so far. So we'll probably jump into those first, and then we'll start doing a little bit of work on here. Hopefully we can figure out the idling issue today. If not, we'll have to come back to it another day, but I don't know, let's get to it. So again, real quick, I think the last time you guys saw the truck in the channel, we added these big wheels as a bit of a joke just to see if they fit. They actually did fit. We haven't been able to drive with them because of this idling issue and stuff like that. But um, we did take it around the block a little bit just to see if we would drive fine for the most part, which it did. It just has some issues hitting back here. Uh, we'll figure those out eventually or maybe just swap out the wheels because, I mean, they are a little bit too uh, big for the truck. But otherwise it does look pretty good now if we move on to the engine uh, as you can see here we have a completely factory engine which is great it's going to allow us to hopefully do a weber carb uh, conversion also add a pace setter header under or add just any sort of header to clean up this mess i mean just look at this it's just a massive amount of vacuum lines uh, things going on here that honestly if you compare it to my red truck there's almost nothing on my red truck but Anyway, so right now, the problem is it doesn't idle properly. It tries to shut off. It has this tumbling sound on it. So we're going to go over some of the basic maintenance stuff. We're going to change our spark plug wires, probably change our spark plugs because I don't know when's the last time the previous owner did that. Uh, we're going to change a oil as well, like a brand new oil filter, brand new oil to throw in here. I will have to run out to the parts store probably, pick up maybe some new belts as well as a fuel filter that looks super orange uh, it's probably just the sunlight the way it's hitting it but i think it's better if we start off with a fresh one at least we know it shouldn't be no fuel issue so that's kind of the attack plan today that's what we're going to hopefully try to change and cover uh, do all those kind of maintenance stuff in it but let me show you some of the small things that i've already been changing that is not really on the channel just because there's too small uh, like too small of a changes or maybe you already have a video about it so i'll link you guys to that if i do but let's move on let me show you that so we're gonna start here with the back uh, if you watch my intro video you remember saying that i didn't have a tailgate handle well we finally put one in here uh, i did have a video for this one so i'll link you guys on the top but basically i switched the one on my red mazda to a chrome version and then i put the one that i took off that truck into this one so now we're finally able to open the tailgate excuse the mess there guys nature you know but also when we changed that i added this nice dress up bolts gdn speed they're m6 bolts uh they fit perfectly back here and i think it makes the tailgate just look a little bit nicer versus having those old rusty bolts in place uh, now if we move on to the inside uh first things also i ended up having to replace this lock because it wasn't working properly it was basically falling all over the place i also had to fix the one on the passenger door uh, because it was very loose basically they forgot to put the kind of lock pins that go on the back i also replaced this little portion on the passenger side i'll show you here i have my old one basically from here it was basically messed up so i decided to just switch it so i took the radio that was here because there's just a wiring mess uh, that bracket was put on wrong and i have a whole new little uh radio vessel thing here that i'm gonna put in place uh so i'm took all of this out and i'm gonna replace that in there i took my shift knob off just for right now i was looking down this uh part just to see what was going on there uh what messes i can see and then we're gonna replace it and put the wood shift knob that roger sent to me put it in here i think it'll be a nice touch bring it up a little bit and look at make it look a little bit cleaner 
Uh, another thing we're about to change to, I mentioned I have no mirror. I have a spare one and I'm gonna replace that today as well, might as well. We're already doing stuff. So yeah, that's kind of all the small changes that have been going on here. Uh, let's start doing some work. Check out how black this oil looks. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Absolutely black. So I will say that the one thing that is nice, at least right now, from this truck, being so tall with the big wheels and uh, everything, is that at least I can get to the oil pan and try to do this oil change without even lifting the truck. That's always nice, less work for me to do, so it's very dark in here. Sorry guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I have my catch, oil catch can here. I'm gonna get a wrench, make sure I can get the oil out of here, and then we're gonna start draining that, so let's do it. Guys, just look at how black this oil is absolutely black this is ridiculous this oil probably hasn't been changed in several several thousands of miles so good thing we're doing it all right guys as you can see here we have removed our air box and uh, air filter from the top and to do that it's gonna be fairly easy we're gonna have Obviously remove the airbox cover, your filter, get it out of the way. You're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts right in the center. Take those out, put them to the side. You're gonna have also this small hose that goes from the bulb cover into about this side. Uh, you should be fairly easy to take off. You should just be able to unplug it. Uh, you're gonna have also three hoses right here. There's gonna be a Phillips screw. Uh, basically loosen those up as much as you can and then just pop the hose back. They should be able to stay in place, not a big deal. And then the next step is gonna be basically messing with this area. Uh, it's gonna be a little tedious just cause it's uh, uh, kinda there with a bunch of other hoses, but basically remove the hose that goes into this one. Should be just able to pop off. You have this whole section here. You don't need to remove it out of this, uh, but basically there's a hose on the bottom. Take that one off and it should be fine. There's also this plug, and the way to remove that plug is just put a screwdriver basically on the plug here uh, and pop it like this way, and then you should be able to remove that plug. Uh, there might be a hose that's in between here. If you do have that hose, the easiest way I found was to get this one out of the way and then just unhook it, get the hose out, and put it back in. And then once you get all that, you can take the whole thing out of the way. Now we have finally access to the carb itself. Uh, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a look, see if anything looks bad, any hoses that might need replacing, and also hit it with some carb cleaner, uh, making sure the carb is not the issue. We're gonna go ahead and change our fuel filter, and then just look at any other hoses that might need some replacing. I think this hose here for the brake booster uh, might need uh, some replacing as well. So we're gonna take a look. I also have a brand new PCB valve. I'm gonna replace that one, might as well. I'm already here. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to doing all of that All right guys and as we were looking around here trying to figure out what lines and Things we should probably run to the auto store real quick and get to replace We also figure out that there's a ground down here. Let me see if I can get close enough Might be too dark you see the cable down there, that little one with the with the yellow? That's a ground wire. That ground is supposed to go into the engine, to the chassis, and then back up to the battery. But it's not plugged into anything in the engine. It's also loose at the chassis level. So that's definitely not helping with our idling issue. Uh, we got a couple lines here that look pretty, pretty bad. We might probably replace them just to be on the safe side. Uh, we also have a couple other lines that seem to be taped off. Um, they got plugged somehow, so we don't know where those go to. But we're gonna hit this with the carb cleaner real quick, replace the fuel filter and a couple lines, and then we're also gonna replace the spark plugs and the spark wires. So let's do it.
All right, guys, we put the new oil filter in place. Everything's good. We did have that one ground wire that was basically hooked up into nothing. And I realized what they did is they put a new ground wire in place, but they grounded straight into the engine and then nothing to the chassis. So what I did was I cut that one because this is going nowhere. It's completely useless. So I cut that one out and then we have here the other side of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ground the engine and then ground the chassis. So it's the same basically setup, it's just a little bit backwards because on factory, it basically goes from the battery to the chassis and then from the chassis to the engine. So now we're doing it backwards. We're going from the battery to the engine, from the engine to the chassis. I'm hoping that's gonna keep it about the same, not affect anything, just because right now the cables are messed up. So if I wanna do this the way it was factory, I basically need to get some new cables for that. But we are ready to clean up some of the oil stuff down there, get it out of the way. Uh, the bolt's already back in place, everything's nice. We need to put this back in place here. We did swap out the spark plugs already, got them to the correct uh, point 032. Uh, we also have a new PCB valve that I install. Uh, we haven't gotten the fuel filter yet, so we'll do that next probably. And then just put everything back together and then make it run and see if that helped with any of our idling issues. If it didn't, then we'll probably have to come back and figure something else out. But that'll probably be for another video. All right, guys. So it's been about a week since that last clip you just saw. Uh, I didn't want to end the video just basically putting everything back together and leaving it as is. So then what I ended up doing was I ordered some parts through Rock Auto, which is a pretty nice site if you're looking for replacement parts, especially when it comes to maintenance and stuff like that. I recommend, guys, uh, recommend you guys check it out if you haven't yet. But basically, I ordered the new fuel filter, ordered all new belts and everything, and then I came back in here and put it in place. Now, what happened was that the engine is still pretty much doing the same thing. It's smoking, it's shaking, it's having a hard time turning on. Uh, when I first started it last week, it did run a little bit better. So I'll play a little clip of that. All right guys, and here we are inside of the truck. Let's see if this comes on nicely. Well, right off the bat, I can tell you that it did turn on a lot quicker than it used to before. It's also, it's still kind of shaking a little bit, but it is on and it's behaving a little bit better than it was before. So we're making progress, I think. So that little clip was basically how it started and it behaved last week. But then as it sat and it kind of just stayed here longer, it basically went back to doing the same thing, having a very hard time starting up and behaving basically pretty bad. So then we're gonna move on to, I guess what is gonna be become the next step. And let me show you guys here real quick. So as you can see right now, you have the brand new fuel filter down there. We still have this mess. I hate the stock carburetor. It's just a complete vacuum mess. Uh, personally, I never worked with them before. Obviously this is way before I was even born. So trying to figure out what exactly is working or not working here is gonna be just a complete nightmare. And I don't wanna do that basically. I don't wanna sit here and start trying to diagnose this because we're gonna get rid of that carburetor anyways. So. I think the next step is gonna be basically, we're gonna start taking this mess off and then I have a spare Weber carburetor that we're gonna clean up and then try to install in here. But I think that's gonna be basically another video. I don't wanna start doing it right now cause then it's gonna make this video be way too long. So like I was saying guys, I think that's all, we, all we're gonna have basically for this video. Unfortunately, it wasn't a happy ending video, but uh, that's how things go sometimes. You start uh, something in a project, you're trying to fix one thing, and unfortunately, either you're not able to fix it, or what you thought was a problem was not actually the problem. And I think it's important to show that, just to show that some of these things just take time. Uh, I know some guys have asked us on Instagram or have even in the comments asking about what happened to the other trucks and whatnot. It's just that we're working through some of these problems uh, and it just takes time to get them figured out and get them fixed. And then that way we can show you guys a full complete video of how to get something done. But anyways, like I was saying, that's really all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like always, hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Hit that like or maybe leave a comment if you want to see something specific. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Thank you.